Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, I'm glad you stopped by. Uh, I appreciate your visit. And if you wouldn't mind, hit the like button before you leave. That helps get my channel promoted a lot. So thanks in advance for that. Um, today, uh, based on the popularity of the uh, video I did a little while back about various kind of bird jewelry, I thought I'd do with some other animals. And today I think I'm going to do foxes. So uh, hopefully this will be as popular as that one was. Um, so I'm going to make a couple of different pendants, one with a wire fox made out of 16 gauge wire, one with an overlay uh, of copper and silver, uh, and then I think I'm going to do a little ring with kind of a fox, stylized fox outline on it. So we'll see how those go. Uh, before we get started on that though, I wanted to thank my subscribers, uh, you guys. I really appreciate uh, all of you signing up and all of the nice comments and the uh, good suggestions. and uh, the financial contributions which uh, help keep me in supplies and, and since this has kind of become my job lately uh, Helps to pay my bills. So thank you for those things I also wanted to thank my patrons over on patreon who are paying for my premium content. Uh, there's a really nice community over there and uh, I'm learning uh, lots of stuff from them, and I hope they're learning lots of stuff from me uh, I've met a lot of really nice people there. There's some really cool things going on as far as exchanging ideas and I have a monthly theme that we do uh, jewelry pieces based on, and uh, I occasionally do a live stream with one of the tiers. Uh, so it's kind of fun. We learn a lot of stuff from each other, and everybody's been uh, pretty darn cool over there. So, um, so thank you guys for that support over there. I really appreciate it. And if you're interested in that, there's links to all of that stuff in the video description down below, as well as links to my merch store uh, and my uh, website where that my jewelry that I make can be purchased. Uh, which you actually deserve. You should go there and buy some. So check those things out. Uh, consider signing up for Patreon. I'd love to have you over there. But uh, enough of the self-promotion. Let's get started on this project. Uh, I think we'll start with the wire pendant. Let's take a look and see what I got drawn up in my idea book. These are really handy, by the way, and they're my merch store. They got... Uh, graph paper, but it's not regular graph paper, it's just got the dots on the corners, so it doesn't kind of interfere with your drawings, but helps you to keep things proportional, at least it does for me. Um, so I thought uh, for the three different things we could do, I could do a little uh, kind of a wire stylized fox pen, and I got that from a piece of clip art I saw online. Uh, this one was some more clip art, uh, and I thought I could do an overlay with him, maybe. And then um, finally, I just try to do a kind of a stylized fox face, not too detailed, with just some uh, angular kind of shapes to, to shape it out like that. And I'll probably put a band made out of half round or something to attach to that. I'm not sure. But either way, let's start with this guy here. I think I'm going to use 16 gauge wire. I have some 16 I uh, pulled uh, the other day for a project, so that should work out for us. Um, if you've never visited my channel before, I use hard silver sheet solder for pretty much everything. And I use a spray-on flux called Mighty Flux, which uh, I find to be pretty effective. So let's, uh, when I've drawn something out, this is another reason I like drawing stuff out anymore, is you can kind of use the piece itself as a template for the pieces. Because I'm going to have to do a lot of assembling of little pieces here to make this. But there's some big ones I can do. Anywhere I can grab a big one, I'm going to try to. So like this one here, of course. That's one we can do to start with. This is also a big piece. And this is a pretty big piece. The other stuff up here starts to get gradually smaller. So let's start with those pieces and see if we can't get some cut out like that. Sometimes you can let the natural tension of the metal sort of help you get the curve, like if you just kind of like it. Just holding it on either side and kind of bending it evenly and it kind of creates a nice curve, so. You can also just shape it around a mandrel or something if you want to. Mm -hmm. getting pretty close. I can cut it and then uh, fine-tune the shape of it after I get it cut off, but I'm, I'm close enough to where I can use this as a guide and cut it off. So let's do that. Need one from here to here. Uh, 
This is almost going to create kind of a, a moon shape. So I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it a little bit longer than it needs to be. And since I'm going to have a join up here like this, I might go ahead and file those right now while we're doing it. And we can kind of just assemble it as we go along. That way I can just kind of solder it on like that. And then we can file the rest of it to a point, I think. So let's do that, and then we can shape this a little more easily because it'll be attached in one point there already, and then you'll have two different points of contact moving around on you. I get a lot of people asking about my torch too. This is a Smith, uh, I think they call it the Silversmith model. It's an uh, acetylene air torch. It just draws in atmospheric air through here uh, to feed the flame. So it's not as hot as an oxyacetylene torch, but you really don't need that, that much heat most times with silver. So. It's a very good torch. I've had it for years, and I, I've actually replaced it once when it, uh, the head of it, anyway, started to become leaky on the first one. It probably was a way to, to buy some O-rings or something to fix it, but I didn't want to mess with it. I just bought a new head for it. You don't want to make mistakes when you're dealing with uh, dangerous gases. All right, going like that. So I want this to meet nicely. I'm going to file this just a little bit that way. So I need one that kind of goes in there now. You may notice that I'm pick soldering everything. That's one of those things that I do pretty frequently if you're new to my channel. It's the thing that took me from being so-so at this to being pretty good at it. So if you are interested, I will put a link up here and you can see my video about pick soldering. It's, it's a, uh, I think it's a, a skill to level yourself up metal smithing wise. Somebody asked me on the last video about the, the one about the birds because I was using some uh, brass and some copper as accent kind of metals on one of the pieces. Uh, they asked about pickling the different metals together. And I so rarely add uh, different metals to things that I have in the past, and I really don't have much experience with it, so I didn't really know how to answer. So if there's anybody out there who watches these who knows more information about pickling and various metals, uh, it'd be great if you could say something in the comments about that because I don't honestly know the answer if there's a problem with that. I've never really had a problem uh, throwing multiple metals into my pickle uh, as long as they're non-ferrous, you know. So um, it's, the person who asked the question seemed to have, had been told that it was not okay. I don't know the answer to that. So if anybody does, maybe you could fill us in on the comments. That'd be very helpful for for people, hopefully.
Okay, we got the general body shape. And I think I'm going to make a big kind of rounded V for his outer part of his head here. So I need two pieces. If this was a realistic fox, I'd want it to be more organic, but this is kind of a stylized fox. So many cool fox drawings online. So really the easiest way to get these lined up nice would be to solder them together first. Alright, let's try soldering those together. I should do raccoons. Raccoons are cute. I think next we got to probably do the, the top of his head. Okay, I think I'm going to solder those in there. I think I may do these inner ones with a slightly thinner gauge wire, I'm not sure. I was going to show you this one. This is one I made a while back. I hadn't originally intended it to look like a fox, but it ended up kind of looking like a fox. So that one was kind of fun.
right, so I'm going to go ahead and let him pick. Well, actually, I'm going to make a bale for him, but I'm going to do that off camera. If you want to see how I make these standard bales, uh, I'll put a link right up there for you. So. Okay, so to save a little time, I went ahead and cut out the first piece. Um, and this is a piece of 18 gauge sterling silver, so I'm going to use that as the background part of the head. And then this is a piece of 18 ish gauge. Uh, Copper sheet, which is cut off of this piece right here, and uh, I'm gonna—I covered it with masking tape, and I'm gonna go ahead and trace it here. So I want—I uh, want the copper sheet to come in just a little bit, I think, right here. That's why I kind of curved it in a little on the inside of this, although. Quite honestly, I was going around the outside of this, so maybe I should put it in a little bit further even than that. Excuse me, I can cut most of this sheet out with the snips here, although the inside curves are hard to do, but I could probably get by with it on this little, little knot up here, probably. And then I'll have to um, drill a hole here, drill a hole here, drill a hole here, and drill a hole here. And then I'll try and cut those out to saw. I'm going to drill those holes and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to do a little sawing. I'm going to start with the big part up here. Use the Dremel to uh, curve these sides inwards a little bit here too, and then I'll bring this back. I'll just be overlaying that over that. Let me trim trim up the silver one a little bit too. Let's see, I'm gonna need a tail that comes out of here that's copper. Doing this to help me get it transferred over here. So this one needs to go kind of like there, there. Cut out this outer edge here just to see if we're getting it matched up pretty well. <clears throat> I just need a little piece of silver to go behind them like that. So it really should be. That should be big enough.
Kind of like that. And then we need to put a little silver tail on him too. Make the, at least the drawing that I, uh, I saw online with had a little zigzaggy kind of thing there. So I think uh, let's peel this. And I'll go ahead and add that little silver overlay. I'm not going to use, I don't think I'm going to use 18 gauge for that little thin spot. Maybe something a little thinner, like 26. <clears throat> I've got that piece of copper that's going to be his tail right here. And then I've got uh, a little bit of silver. I kind of jaggedly cut it off. Uh, and then I'm just going to uh, flux this, sweat a little bit of hard solder on there, turn it over on top of this after this is fluxed, heat the whole thing till it sticks down, and I'll just trim off the edges. Sometimes these things start to ice skate on you when, when the solder flows. <laughs> you can see it and run away from me. <laughs> this is a cute design, whoever came up with this one. Start assembling this thing, I guess. So I, got, I flipped this upside down. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to sweat a little solder onto the copper and see how that works. I'm not sure how neatly I can do this. I guess we're going to have to find out, but um, we'll give it a try. <laughs> solder down there but it does sometimes drift on you a little bit it behaves kind of like a frictionless surf surface and it's, it's really hard to get it to stay where you want it to stay Could sweat some solder on here in advance, but I'm just gonna pick a little bit in there I think, and see if we can get it to go. Yeah, the little silver on his tail is trying to go AWOL on me. Can't do that, buddy.
<laughs> it is a little bit of this. Um, I think it's probably 12 gauge half round. It's pretty skinny. And I cut a, cut a couple of uh, half, half loops out of it. After I wrap it around something. I'm going to do not quite half circles like that. Okay, so I'm just going to um, sweat a little bit of solder on the ends of these uh, two little half, half circles. I'm going to put one up underneath e each of his ear, I think, and just uh, solder it to the back. That kind of looks cool with the black uh, from the copper being all oxidized. Maybe I should just leave it like that. Now, let's make a ring with kind of foxy sort of design. I'm going to make something like this. I was thinking 14, but it might be nice to have a little more detail like this. That would be a pretty dainty ring. I suppose that's all right. Let's do that. This is some. Although, do I have enough? Is the question. This is more like 16 gauge square. I, I took some 14 and made it smaller with my draw plate. <clears throat> Let's try it and see. So I think maybe make these two triangles here, make this triangle here, and that would be our starting point. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and continue making components here, and then I'll uh, assemble them all under the camera, but I don't want to make you watch me do all this little tiny filing in the end, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make another one of these next, um, and then I'll probably connect the ends, and then I'll go from there on the end. I'm going to solder these first three together.
soldered on a couple down there and I'm going to add a couple more here. Big of a ring we want to make. Let's see what an eight would be. We want this to be about an eight. Let's have a band. Or might you just use some fourteen gauge? utilize some of this to keep everything from falling apart. Push this into this magnesium block a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let that pickle with the other ones. Here's the, <clears throat> here's the shined up first one. It came out pretty cute. Like that stylized kind of stuff. Here's the second one with the copper. The only part I struggled with on this one here really was uh, cleaning this up inside of here with a little more work and some more careful dremeling. I can probably get that to look a little better. But overall I'm pleased with it. I think it's kind of cute. I particularly like the tail part right there. That's cute. And then here's the here's the ring. I, you know, I was I wasn't sure about this one. I was kind of playing this one by ear, but I almost like this better than all of the rest of them. That surprises surprises me because I didn't think I would. But uh, yeah, so those are the the three fox themed ones. I'll take some good pictures of them and put it at the end of the video. Oh my gosh, I have polishing here. <laughs> okay, I hope you enjoyed all those little foxes. Uh, I had fun making them and I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, if you did, make sure to hit that like button. That really helps out my channel a lot. So I appreciate it if you do that. And uh, after you do that, you know, watch a few of my other videos. I have. Uh, I'm approaching 200 videos now, I think, which is amazing. I can't believe I've done that many. Um, but there's a lot of valuable content here that you can explore for hours and hours, uh, especially if you're interested in learning metalsmithing. So check some of those out. Uh, maybe consider subscribing. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So 
Thanks for watching. Happy silversmithing. Take care.